Hey guys, I'm Alina and today we are going to learn interrogation in French. So let's get started. So first, let's know what is interrogatio. So interrogatio in English is doing interrogation, which means converting a sentence into an uh, interrogative form, which is asking a question. So in French, we have three forms, which is le intonation, avec esque, and le inversio. So in three forms, we do interrogation. So now, let's learn more about these. So the first one is intonation. So in intonation, we only use it verbally and it's you should avoid doing this in exams using intonation because uh, probably you will not get marks because it is the simplest form and it only comes to effect when we are orally speaking. So avoid uh, writing this. So just for information it is. So when I say tu parles français, it's a simple statement. And when I say tu parles français, so I am increasing the pitch when I come to the end of the sentence. So this tells you that I am asking you a question. So tu parles français and tu parles français. So there is a difference. So in intonation, we add an ex, uh, we add an question mark at the end of the sentence. So in interrogatio, this question mark is the most important thing. So always put it at the end of the sentence. In any form, is it uh, whether it is inversion with esque or even in intonation. So that is uh, how we do intonation. So uh, another example, if I say il uh, il mange du pain. So if I say il mange du pain, so it's like a simple statement. But when I say il mange du pain, so I'm increasing the pitch at the end. That means it is a question. So this is how we do intonation. So the next form in interrogative is esque. So we do interrogation with esque. So how do we do that? So first, suppose take this sentence, elle arrive à Paris. So if you want to uh, make it a question, what you can do is you can just add the esque in front of the sentence. So it comes before the sentence, not after the sentence, not in between, but before the sentence. So, el arrive a pari. So, if I want to ask a question, then it would be eskel arrive a pari. So, in this sentence, I have added an esker and a question mark. Don't forget about the question mark. That's also important. So, here you must have seen that I have a written ker like this and not like this. So it is because if you remember the basic rule in French that when two vowels come together, so it it originally was k and l. So these two are vowels. So uh, in French it is a rule that when two vowels comes together, so the first vowel gets cancelled and a comma or an inverted comma takes its place. So this is how we should write it and not s k then l. So one e should be cut. So that is how you do it. And this case is only when there is a vowel when two vowels come together. So s k in literal meaning means is, but it varies from sentence to sentence. So like this sentence. She comes from Paris, so is she coming? Uh, she is coming from Paris. So if we add esque, then it would be is she coming from Paris? So it would be a question. So if I say, uh, nous, uh, sorry, vous jouez à jardin, nous jouez au jardin. So if I want to make it in a question avec esque, so it would be esque vous jouez au jardin. So esque. Vous jouez au jardin avec un uh, question mark. So that is how you would do it. Esco. So esco little meaning is is, but it changes from sentence to sentence. We add it before the sentence, and at the last of the sentence we add in question mark. So that is how you do esco. Now we'll do the last form of interrogation, which is inversion. 
So, in inversion, we change or better say interchange the position of the subject pronoun and the verb, which is the pronoun sujet and the verb. So, here take an example. Wo arrive ce soir? So, here first step is to identify the pronoun sujet and the verb. So, wo is the subject pronoun or pronoun sujet and arrive is the verb. So, we have to interchange the position. So, it would be arrive. Then we'll place the wu and we'll place a hyphen between them. Arrive wu and then the rest of the sentence will fall as it is and an exclamation, sorry, a uh, question mark will be at the end. So, first uh, identify the pronoun sujet and the verb. Then interchange the position and between them add a hyphen and at the last of the sentence or at the end of the sentence add a question mark. So, this is how you do inversion. Now, an important rule which you need to keep in mind while doing inversion. Suppose, I'll take an example of the sentence Il va à l'école. Okay. So, here, il is a pronoun sujet and va is a uh, verb. So, we have to invert them. So, it would be va, il, and then rest of the sentence, which is alcohol. So, it would be va il alcohol. But when I say va il, it's not that smooth pronunciation. So, for, pre for a better pronunciation, whenever two vowels come together like this, uh, and especially in inversion, we add a T between them. So, this would be va til alcohol. So, when you add a T, so the pronunciation is now much smoother. It would be Vatil Alekol, not Vail Alekol. So it would be very confusing if you say Vail Alekol. It's better or it's uh, it helps in pronunciation when we add a T. So it would be Vatil Alekol. So do not forget to add the T whenever there are two vowels together during inversion. So that is how you do interrogation with inversion. So now we are going to do the negation of esca and inversion. So first one, esca to m le foot. So as you know that in negation, we introduce the words ne and pa, which wrap around the conjugated verb. So here, esca to m le foot. So here, the verb is m. So our um, ne and pa will wrap around m. So this is how we do esca in uh, negation. It's simple like normal in uh, like normal negation. So now we are gonna do negation of uh, esca and inversion. So we have we have to introduce ne and pa in, during negation, and ne and pa wraps around the conjugated verb. Here uh, esca to m le foot in this. M is the conjugated verb and uh, we have to wrap around the conjugated verb which is M. So, we have written it like that only. Esca tune M pa le foot. So, in uh, esca it's not very complicated. It's just the same. The difference is that we have only one esca in the beginning. Rest negation we will do the same. What changes here is in inversion. So, we have wantil o travaille o judvi. So here, ne and pa would not be only around wo, but also around il. So it will be around this whole thing. So it would be ne won til pa. Ne won til pa. So if I have mange tu du pe, so mange tu. So negation would be ne mange tu pa du pe. So this is how we do the negation. So that was all for today's video. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to hit the like button, share this video and subscribe to my channel and click the notification bell so that you get notified every time I upload a video. Also, don't forget to check the description box for free worksheet with answer keys. I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.